Hi guys, welcome back to Keith's Garage. I'm Keith, you're in my garage. Um, more progress on my 237 cubic inch Mopar Flathead 6 overhaul. You can see I've made some good progress since the last video. Silver head is on, I'll go through that. Oil pump is on. I do something uh, I've never done before in this video. I keep doing lots of things I've never done before. And that's part of the reason I'm rebuilding this engine is to learn and, and have fun and enjoy it. Um, don't let the money scare you. It's expensive <laughs> to rebuild. Even if you do your own labor, it's expensive, but don't let that fool you because uh, you can't really put a price tag on what you learn and the education you get It's and the stimulation for your brain. It's so fun and uh, it keeps, keeps me sharp and, and keeps me learning. And you say you learn something new every day. Well, I guess that's true. And I learn something every day. I come into my garage too. So maybe I'll learn two things that day. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to pressurize the oil system in this engine today. I'm going to take my old oil pump and I'm going to run it with a drill and I'm going to pressurize the oil and let you see the oil dripping from all the bearings on the bottom. Stick around for that. I'm going to show you how to index your oil pump so your distributor is on number one uh, top dead center so that it's indexed correctly because it can either it can go out 180 degrees very easily and many cars are out 180 degrees and the car will still run but maybe I'll shed some light on a few things on that for you. Uh, I'm going to put the front timing cover together. I'm going to introduce you to my buddy Eric again with his press and he pushes in my front seal. Stick around. Lots of progress today. We're having tons of fun. So if you like what you see, please hit like, please. Thumbs up would be fantastic. I love that. Here we go.
this is basically an oil crossover tube. Oil from the oil pump gets sucked up this pickup tube here. The screen in the bottom of the oil pan sucks oil up through the oil pump and straight down this line into the block right here and feeds main oil galleries down here and feeds all the oil passages to all the main and rod bearings. All right, so for your pure entertainment purposes only, I've set up a little laboratory here. We're gonna make a bit of a mess. Got cardboard laid out because I'm gonna be spewing oil here. I've hooked up an oil pressure gauge here, right off the main gallery. Zero to 100 pounds. I got a piece of round steel and I filed this notch in the end. I just hand filed it. That'll slide right in the hole there. My oil pump. And I can use an electric drill to power my oil pump because I ground the gear off of my old removed oil pump. I All right, I'm gonna show you what I did here with this oil pump. You can see there's supposed to be gear on the end there. I ground it off completely, which is my hand grinder. This is the old pump. It makes good pressure though, it was a good pump. Not bad, good spare. And see the little tang inside of there, that little slot? I'll take my uh, piece of steel that I hand filed to match that slot and uh, I'll just use it to drive the oil pump through my drill there, right? Oh. And then we'll turn that oil pump, see what we can do. I cleaned everything, I cleaned everything. Cleaned the pump, cleaned the lines. I got a good drive for the oil pump. I'm gonna be able to drive that oil pump without turning the camshaft, but I need oil, right? So this is the oil pickup tube screws on here. This is a three, I think it's three eighths parallel pipe but uh, tapered pipe fits, 3 8 tapered pipe to a barb. And I'm gonna put a hose on there. And it's a good clean hose because I'm, I'm feeding this right in my main bearings, my rod bearings. So I'll put that hose on there. And I got a jug of oil here. I'll try and move it over. And we're gonna pressurize the oil system here by hand, the electric pump. We're gonna see if we can draw oil up and set up some cameras and see if we can see it dripping out of the bearings. We've got good tight bearing clearances. We should see oil dripping out of here about one every two or three seconds, one drip. And ideally, if I could turn the crank over at the same time, maybe we can line up one of the oil spray holes on the conrod with the oil in the bearing surface on the crank. Maybe we can get some oil to squirt out there. That'd be cool. See how much oil pressure we can make. So what I did do is, this is normally a return line from the filter housing. This is a send line to the filter. And it's a return line from the filter, I think is how it goes. I believe something like that. I plug that off and I plug that up. All the oil galleries are now sealed. One, two, three, four, and there's one in there. And one at the back right here, all sealed off. So we're gonna see what kind of pressure we can make. The oil pressure regulator is in place. Um, and there's a return. There's a couple holes right here, right underneath the plunger. One here and one here. This is your uh, main dump back to the oil pan. And I believe the second one over here is that the plunger moves out far enough, it opens up the second port and it dumps back to the pan as well. And also allows free dump flow from the filter housing into the oil pan as well. So let's, uh, Give it a shot, see what happens. Let's turn that oil pump. I'm just gonna prime my oil pump here, put some fresh oil into it. Everything here needs to be really clean. We're putting fresh oil in, into the oil pump and we're also you know, feeding that right to the bearing. So you gotta be super diligent that everything is clean here. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can, you guys can see the oil pressure gauge there. I'll start pumping it. Here we go. That's 42 pounds right there. And I'm bar barely turning the drill. Okay. Watch what happens when I hit 40 pounds. The relief opens and you're gonna see oil come spraying out of that relief hole there. 
So that's uh, 20 pounds. I got an oil dripping out of the hole, just over 20, 25 or so pounds. It's spewing out if I speed up. Starts gushing out pretty good. Got oil coming out of all over the place. It's dripping. One, two, three. Ah. Uh -huh. I'd like to try and get it coming out of one of the spray jets. Let me see if I can get that happening. Hard to get the right camera angle in here, guys. I'm sorry. I'll do my best. So right now I'm sitting at about 20 pounds. Got oil starting to drip out of different spots here. Not sure 100% where it's coming from, but. I see it's coming out of the front timing cover. So that means my feed is going up there. That's good. So I'm making a bit of a mess here, but you shouldn't get dirty. Oil's gonna drip onto this tray here. I've been doing it and testing. Um, you basically run the drill. This goes into a slot here, I'll put it in there. And you don't have to go full speed, you just kind of go like, like that. Mm -hmm. Just under so the oil's not coming out of that hole there. And that, how many pounds is that? That's like almost, I'm jumping on 40 pounds pressure right now, right? Bouncing around 40 pounds. I just wanna look up there with my camera. Just keep the pressure, kind of keep it in the middle, not down, and then, push in as you turn it. I'm just gonna videotape. Let me get my camera ready. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead and turn the oil pump. I'm not sure if that's coming out of the piston jet or where it's coming from, but we got good lubrication. Uh, I'd really like to get it to come out of a jet for you, but I can't make that happen. And what are you reading on the gauge there? Like 40 pounds right now? Slightly over 40. Just over 40 pounds, and the drill is barely turning. We're easily making 40 pounds. Uh, lots of oil coming out of there. Just slow it down a bit so it's not coming out of the overflow there. All right, thanks for your help. Well, in just a few minutes there, uh, we went through about uh, two and a half liters of oil, and we weren't even turning it fast, easily hitting over 40 pounds, 42 or so. Um, wow, that pump makes pressure quick. Um, you know, they talk about so many drips per second, I can't really tell where it's coming from. I'm getting more than that, but it's not like streaming out of there. And I know my bearing clearances are good. So I'm not really concerned. I'm making good pressure, a low RPM. I think this thing's gonna fly. I think it was cool to point out here is that there's a really good visual is that when your crankshaft is turning, you know, it's not really, I don't think it's dipping into the oil. The oil level's down here somewhere and your crank is not splashing into it because then you get everything really extremely foamy, I think. A lot of aeration and foam and get it to every critical important part of your engine every bearing it's got to dissipate all that heat it's got to keep well lubricated and those bearings are ripping i mean they're turning super fast so it doesn't take long to fail a bearing if you're not getting oil to it that's for sure you know most people just fire up the engine they just put an oil pressure gauge on and maybe just fire it up and and they see you know 40 pounds good to go fired up i know all my my channels are all clean everything's been hot tanked and boiled and cleaned up completely I'm not concerned. I'm getting oil in all the areas I think that are crit critical. I was kind of worried about maybe up at the front, that little oil pipe, little tube that comes from the front of the camshaft and uh, an oil cam chain, timing chain. And I see oil dripping out of this area right up here. So that's dripping down from the timing chain and down out here. So I'm happy with that. Ah, making good pressure, dumping the tank.
I think it's on to the next steps. This is the old pump, like I said. I'm gonna take it off now and put the new oil pump back in again and going with a brand new oil pump. Well, this one's working well. I bought a new one anyways. And the one I bought is a new old stock made in the USA. So that's what's going on there is the new one. Okay, here's my fitting that I used. I'll show it to you. Just basic, uh, that's tapered pipe. Just replaces the oil pickup tube here. And I believe that's, they call it parallel pipe. It's not tapered. Three eighths, I think it is. And put this back together and get ready for the next stage of fun. All right, here's the brand new oil pump ready to go. Um, you're supposed to dip these in a bucket. You can dip these in a bucket of oil and spin them and get all the air bubbles out. I'm not quite ready to prime this pump yet to get the air out of it. I'm going to probably take the cover off and pack it full of Vaseline. That'll also work. That'll make good. Oh, we got to ensure that we index the, this little slot here to the distributor. So we got to get uh, cylinder number one on top dead center and get our uh, our distributor in there. And I marked it when I took it apart. I want my number one to be, I think it's down at around seven o'clock. So you can, it'll work in any position really, but um, I want to make it proper. So I'm going to set it. Um, I'll get my distributor cap, but I'm just going to lay this in here for now. And then I'll index it when I'm ready here. So that when our distributor's pointed at uh, spark plug wire number one, you know, we're at top dead center and we've got the distributor rotor pointing in the direction we want it. And a lot of people forget that or maybe don't do that. And then your number one is like in a weird position. I guess it would be like 11 o'clock or noon or something like that. It's not really how it was supposed to be, so. Okay, so again, indexing the oil pump so that it's at top dead center for the distributor cap. How do we know we're top dead center? Well, we know number one is at top dead center. Both valves are closed. If you look over here on the timing mark, TDC is right here at the center of my point. It's under the point. I'll move it and show you. See, it says DC there for dead center. So I'm gonna just turn that back a little bit to get that to DC there, top dead center. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the two valves. I haven't done a total valve set yet, but we know that there should be valve clearance, tappet clearance here on both intake and exhaust when we're at top dead center, number one piston. So now we've got our distributor rotor lined up here. We can spin it freely because it's the Little key index key on the end of it there. That's gonna go in the oil pump, right? All right, so I just guessed and I threw my oil pump in, right? I'm gonna line up this little tang here. Now I know this bolt goes down here. That's a lock bolt. And I'm spinning the rotor to see where it locks. Let's take that little bolt out. So that's gonna sit like that. So right now I'm locked in, my rotor's pointing up here at like, what is that, just off one o'clock. I marked my distributor right here with a little scribe. That's where it was when I was at number one top dead center before. I'm, just, I'm out a little bit, ah, I'm very close. I just spun that 180. I'll try moving it one tooth on the, I'll try turning the oil pump a little bit, see what happens. So, I mean, I'm just doing it for the sake of, I want, I'm gonna put it back the way it was when I got it. I wonder what it was like new from the factory. Is one down here? Even if it was out. So some guys will put it together like that, right? And you're out 180 degrees. And as long as number one is pointed right there when you're at top dead center, the engine's still gonna run. It's just that top dead center is in a different spot than over here. It'll still run. I'm gonna try and get it right. And so what I did is I took my oil pump out, I twisted it to the next tooth, 
And uh, now, I'm spin when I'm spinning the rotor here, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm turning the shaft to line it up with the slot in the oil pump. I'm way over here now, or 180 degrees is out way, I'm way up here. When I took it out, it was down here. So I'm gonna go back. I guess I was real close. I guess I did mark it right in the center. Maybe I was right on the edge, but either way, my number one was down here and that's where I'm gonna put it back to. So just to reiterate what's going on here, the slot in the end of the oil pump is gonna match up with the drive slot, the male end and distributor cap. So right now I just did it. See it's sitting in a direction like that. And this is how the oil pump sits in there. This is very similar. It's sitting on a direction like that. So is that. I want it over here. So what I gotta do is go like that. That's how it sits. Try and get it to sit right in about that spot. I, sh I should be good because I marked number one for me. It was right there. All right, last try. Let's put the tang in, see what happens. My number one is right there. I'll move it out of the way on, on purpose here and turn it in. Look at that. My bolt, number one is marked right there. My rotor is pointing straight at it. That is how it came apart for my engine. But I'm gonna clean up that distributor because I'm rebuilding the engine. We want it to look nice, right? Anyways, that's where my oil pump's going. So I'll bolt it down. Like I said, it could be over here if you want, number one up here, over here, or here, whatever you want to do. It's really up to you where you uh, decide. I'm going with that one. All right, just want to point something out with these engines and these head gaskets. When I ordered this gasket kit, um, I ended up getting it from uh, Vintage Power Wagons. Most of my parts came from there, actually, everything. It came with this gasket. And when I looked at it, I knew it was wrong. And, and I can tell because there's no hole up here. There's a little there's a bulge up here on my uh, block. If you look, there's a coolant passage there. And this gasket does not allow for that coolant passage. So that's wrong. Because in later engines, they have there's a little bulb on the front of the cylinder head for this coolant passage. And I think it's to do with water pump bypass when the thermostat is closed. If you look at this gasket, see a little bulge here? It sits in there. So the earlier engines did not have a hump in the cylinder head. I'll maybe grab the cylinder head and show you that. But make sure you've got the right gasket for your engine. Don't miss that little hole right there. So I'm going with this head gasket. And you know what, I gotta, I gotta say, good job for Power Wagons because when I phoned them and I told them you sent me the wrong head gasket and I told you I had an, a later series block here and I needed the hump for the water passage, they immediately sent me a, the correct head gasket prepaid and I had it within a week. So, cheers to them, they did a good job, good service. Not sure why I got the wrong one in the beginning, but it happens. I'll show you the cylinder head. Okay, this is my cylinder head. See the little hump right here? You see that? I'm trying to do this. It's awkward. <laughs> this little hump here indicates I need that cooling passage. And you can see it here in the head, right here. Earlier blocks did not have that. They had a different little jumper hose up at the water thermostat housing. This one does not. So I have two of those other head gaskets that do not have this hole. And uh, I looked at my 53 Chrysler, sorry. Not my 53 Chrysler, my 38 Chrysler, and it does not have a hump here, so I'm keeping those other spare head gaskets for my 38 Chrysler. Okay, let's compare my uh, 38 Chrysler engine here. If you look down there in the front of the cylinder head, there's no little hump there. And if you look, see there's a little jumper hose that goes across from the water pump into thermostat housing. My other engine does not utilize this style water pump. It's just a little different. The bypass, instead of having this hose up top here, you've got that little hump down on the block where the water pump bolts up. I have a coolant leak I gotta deal with. See a little bit of coolant in there? This housing here, it's leaking out the back a little bit. And I took it off and I sanded it and I put gasket, uh, like a Permatex type gasket in there, plus the stock gasket. Yeah, it's still leaking. I guess I'm going to have to see my friend Eric again and see if I can get him to plane off maybe a little bit of that neck there, that water neck. Maybe it's corroded up too much. I just can't seem to get it to seal properly, but I have to get on that soon. 
So we're gonna put the cylinder head on and we're gonna use some thread sealant on the bolts for the cylinder head bolts because a lot of the bolts are going down into the actual threading into the cooling passages in the block. And over time, we can see leaks there actually. Coolant leaks coming out around the cylinder head bolts and stuff. We don't really want that. So I bought all new head bolts. Uh, I don't know where they're made. I would like to see they're made in the USA. They say B, A, N on them. It's like three marks. That means the grade five, I think. But I'm not going to take a chance on reusing the old head bolts. I don't know how many times they've been torqued or retorqued, or I think they're original actually. So we're going to put thread sealant on these and torque them down. And this is going to keep my top end nice and clean. I flip it over. I'm just going to index a couple here just to make sure the head gasket is uh, is lined up properly. Uh, that's feeling good. Four corners. Well, that's it for uh, this uh, week's episode. I guess it's not really weekly. I'm doing it about bi-weekly. Uh, I think we had uh, lots to share in that video, lots of progress. I'm happy. Um, I wanted to talk about actually this fitting at the back of the cylinder head here. There's a hole in the block and what goes in there is what's the uh, temperature probe for the uh, temperature gauge in the cab little capillary tube. I think it's maybe a little bulb on the end. I don't remember what they call it now, some kind of a bulb. I think it's filled with ether. And as you get hot, it pressurizes and moves the temperature gauge in the cab of the car. And it's called a gland nut because it's got a special uh, seat that allows the fitting to thread into it and seal. And um, this being a 1953 head, it had a smaller incorrect temperature probe in it. It didn't work in my, uh, this 53 engine was in my 38 Plymouth and uh, I could not hook up the temperature gauge. I just laid it on the block here and it was as good as it could get. So what I did is I drilled out the block, actually drilled it and tapped it for this gland nut for the bigger temperature probe now and it will fit. So that's, I'm looking forward, that's probably, I, I don't know, that's one of the most exciting things for me to get this car back together and get accurate temperature gauge. So anyways, that's where we're at today. Um, I'm happy with the progress. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe and, and give it a thumbs up. Um, that's it. Um, we're in Canada. It's winter and we're having fun rebuilding engines. Um, why are we outside right now? Um, just to mix things up. You know, you got to get sick of the inside of the garage. Uh, it doesn't hurt on a, on a half decent day. We're still below freezing here today. A little bit of snow this week, but, uh, 
it's still nice to be able to get outside and do a little bit outside and just get out of the garage because it's going to get real cold. <laughs> See you on the next one.